Uh, Madam Chair, uh, the next is Katie um, Cummings Baco uh, is on the list, it looks like. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Hi, my name is Katie Cummins Baco, and I have been a medical cannabis patient since the spring of 2016. I have a connective tissue disease called Ehlers Danlos Syndrome, and or, or EDS we call it. Um, it is gaining a lot of awareness lately. A lot of a lot more people. Sorry. Oh, I was like, I don't think that's me. I've done that before, though. Um, a lot of people are gaining awareness about my disease, but what most people don't know about EDSers is that we have um, so many other comorbidities that go along with the diagnosis. In addition to chronic pain, muscle spasms, and joint dislocations caused by EDS, I also have mast cell disease, uh, postural arthrostatic tachycardia syndrome, small fiber neuropathy, tethered cord syndrome, intractable headaches, sleep problems, and those are just a few of my issues. I stopped counting my surgeries after around number 22, but my first was at age seven, and my next is in Washington, D.C. for my tethered cord, uh, my tethered spinal cord. I've been unable to work since 2014, I have my master's degree in social work and used to be a public school social worker. I've had more doctor's appointments than I have social engagements. I'm here to testify because while any improvements to our medical program are positive, they're never enough. I used to go to one dispensary until it seemed I have developed a tolerance to the products they provide. I can't really tell what's going on with it though because we're not allowed to know which products we're getting. It's only labeled as THC or CBD. I went to the other dispensary and their CBD, though it's um, indicated for my mast cell disease, um, it made me sick. Again, I'm not allowed to know what's in it besides CBD, so I can't tell what of that product is actually making me sick. So I'm not, a, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be avoiding from that particular dispensary. For a while, I was going to both dispensaries, getting my CBD from one dispensary and getting my THC from the other dispensary. But if I were to take the, um, the medications from both dispensaries that the pharmacy, pharmacists at the dispensaries were recommending, it was costing me over $750 a month. And that's not including the actual prescribed medications that I'm taking as well. So now I get my THC from one of the dispensaries and my CBD from a local store that one of my friends owns. We talk about eating whole foods as a way of healthy living, but we're providing our patients with a processed product. That to me is a problem. My son is actually sitting over there. I brought him for the learning experience, and he has the same disease I do. Um, without the transparency of the product that I'm putting into my system, I'm very uncomfortable putting it into his. Um, he actually has worse mast cell issues than I do, and for the first five years of his life was unable to eat food at all by mouth. And so now to put a, pro a medication product into a system when I'm not allowed to know the ingredients in it beyond CBD is very scary to me. So I'm not willing to put him on the program. And we need to redefine the real problems with our medical program as they stand right now. This bill does very little improve people's lives. I'm not going to advocate against it. I think the things that are in it are wonderful, but it's just not enough. And I have to ask who we're really looking out for. I've sat through the other hearing prior to this and now listening to this. I just, patients aren't centered in any of the things that we're discussing here. I got off 200 milligrams of Oxycontin and Codone a day. I had been on that for almost six years of my life. Cannabis was my exit drug. I didn't use anything. I was told I would not be able to do it without methadone or suboxone, and I used only cannabis. And I hope people that are 
um, voting against these things about cannabis are listening because it's really important to me that people realize that cannabis is an exit drug and it kept me from dying and patients are not being listened to. When I was asked where I thought I'd be without cannabis, the only thing I can say is I would be dead. I was being told to take 200 milligrams of Oxycontin and codone a day. I was driving on that amount of medication. And now I'm not, I'm bright eyed and I'm clear headed and I'm able to live my life in a much better way. It's no secret that I'm in favor of full legalization because it's saving lives. It's not taking them. It gave me my life back. I'm for full legalization not only because I believe it will drastically improve our medical program and lives depend on it, but also because we, are in, we so desperately need to address the disparities in the racial equity in racial equity with the war on drugs. We need our leaders here to listen and to stand up and be as brave as we patients are. I hope you'll work as hard as we have in saving lives and protecting ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your testimony.